everyone in this video we are going to talk about energy now we need energy for all the activities that we perform throughout the day now the major source of uh, energy for us is the sun which is considered to be the biggest natural source of energy and the forms of energy that we use on a daily basis most of them are a modification of the energy that comes from the sun itself not only the solar energy that we get from the sun there are so many other forms of energy that we use for example the energy that we get from the atomic nuclei by separating the nucleons is what we call as the nuclear energy and another example could be the geothermal energy which is derived from the interior of the earth and tidal energy which we get from the high and low tides now some of the energy forms that we use on a daily basis are the modifications of the solar energy itself for example the tidal energy here comes to us because of the presence of sun or the gravitational force of sun and the moon combined together not only these there are many other forms of energy as well for example hydro energy and electrical energy etc now let's discuss something more about energy now for that let's look at a situation wherein a moving truck hits a stationary car and because of which the car gets displaced to a certain distance now what has happened here the truck which was moving with a certain velocity has hit a car which was not moving or it was stationary and as a result the car got displaced from its position to a new position and because it has moved to a certain distance now here what has happened is the moving truck has performed some work that is displacing the car from its place to a new place that is the displacing this car to a certain distance so that work has been performed by the truck or the moving truck so we can conclude from this that a moving object gets the capability of doing work or it is capable of doing work now for a better understanding let us look at another example which is of a bowling game now here what happens is when the bowling ball hits the pins the pins are thrown away from their place here you can see it clearly when the ball hits the pins the pins are thrown away from their places respective places now this bowling ball had performed some work that is displacing these pins isn't it but what was it doing actually it was moving with a certain velocity and when it hits the pins the pins get displaced so that's how we can say that this bowling ball had performed a certain amount of work even from this example we can conclude that an object which is moving with a certain velocity has the capability of doing work or it's it gets the capability of doing some work now let's look at some more examples now let's say we have a hammer and we lift it up like this to a certain height that is h let's say now so let's say we have a wooden block where an iron nail is fixed now when we drop this hammer in order for it to hit this iron nail let's see what happens the iron nail digs into the wooden block like this that means when we release this hammer from the height h the hammer was able to perform some work that is to make this nail dig if dig in further into the wooden block now let's look at one more example that is when we raise a ball to a certain height let's say y and we release it we do not exert any force to it but simply we release it then what will happen the ball falls down that means from these two example we can conclude that an object when it is raised to a certain height is capable of doing some work in the previous slide we concluded that an object which is moving is able to do work and here we saw that an object which is even raised to a certain height is able to do work that means the objects can get the capability of doing work by different means be it moving with a certain velocity or raised to a certain height 
as we saw here. Now we know already that an object which is having a capability of doing work is said to possess energy, isn't it? So whenever an object is capable of doing work, it must be having some amount of energy. Now where does this energy come from? We know that it, is, uh, it comes from even uh, either the moving object with a certain velocity or when it is raised to a certain height. Now how does an object with certain amount of energy is able to perform work? Let's try to find an answer to this question now. For that we will take the same example that is uh, uh, what we have looked before. So a moving truck hits the car and as a result the car gets displaced. So in this example what has happened is this moving truck which was moving with a certain velocity had some energy and because of which it was able to apply some force to the car which was stationary. And when it applied some force to the car then a certain amount of a part of the energy that the truck had got transferred to the car which was stationary and because of that gaining that energy the car was able to move to a certain distance. So this is what is the mechanism behind this example. So in general we can say that an object that possesses energy can exert a force on another object. Now when this happens the energy is transferred from the former to the latter as is uh, seen here that is a part of energy of the truck has been transferred to the car. So the second object that is the car may move as it receives energy and therefore do some work. So this is how the car gets displaced when the energy from the truck gets transferred to the car. Now we measure energy in terms of the same unit that we use for work that is joules and we have already discussed about joules in the previous video where we discussed about the work done. Now let us look again to the examples that we have discussed before. So in these examples by observing these examples we concluded that an object moving with a certain velocity is capable of doing work or it has some energy. Now that kind of energy which an object possesses because it is moving with a certain velocity or by virtue of its motion is what we call as kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is a kind of energy which an object possesses because of its motion or by virtue of its motion. Now we have looked at these two examples as well and we have concluded that an object when it is raised to a certain height is capable of doing work or is possessing some energy. Now this energy that the object possesses when it is raised to a certain height is what we call as the potential energy. In fact it is a kind of potential energy which we call as gravitational potential energy since when the object is raised to a certain height we are actually doing work against the force of gravity. So this is a special kind of potential energy which we call as the gravitational potential energy. Now these two kinds of energies that is kinetic energy and potential energy when they are put together are called are altogether called mechanical energy. So these are the two types of mechanical energy that is kinetic and potential energy. So with this we, we have come to the end of this video and I hope this video on energy was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Tutorialspoint.com simply easy learning.